Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to Epic Future Space. My name is Michael Clark, aka Space Mike, and I thought that a good topic to do on this channel would be to do monthly launch summaries for the year. Now, here we are in March of 2017. We're almost at the end of March and I haven't even done January yet. So I really need to get on this if uh, I wanna be able to cover all the launches. And what I was thinking was doing a video for each month and then kind of having a quarterly launch summary. And then at the end of the year, um, probably having one big final uh, countdown for all the launches that took place around the world from each country. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started on January of 2017. Now the first launch of this year for 2017 took place in China and that took place on January 5th which was a Thursday at 1518 Coordinated Universal Time. This launch was the Chengzheng 3B, or the Long March 3B rocket, and it launched from the Zhicheng Space Center. Now, the payload for this mission was the second in a series of telecommunication technology test satellites. What exactly they're testing, I'm not sure. Probably different bands of the spectrum, or even, you know, some sort of new novel type of technology. But in any case, there's not a whole lot of information about what it is that they're testing. Now, the first of these test satellites was launched in 2015 and this one, the TJS-2, was placed into a geostationary orbit. The second launch of this year also was conducted by China, and this one was a really interesting launch because it launched from the back of a trailer. You'll see what I mean in just a second here. This launch happened on January 9th, which was a Monday, and it happened at 4.11 Coordinated Universal Time from the Jiquan Space Center. This is the Kaizhou 1A rocket. It's a three-stage solid rocket that is based off of the Dongfeng ICBMs that use a mobile transporter, which you can see uh, being uh, erected there and uh, taken down to get ready for launch. payloads for this particular mission were an Earth imaging sat called Ling Kiao 3 and also two experimental CubeSats. Now this rocket, the Kaizhou 1A, is going to be marketed commercially, which means that it could be available for customers all over the world and not just, you know, the Chinese Academy of Sciences or other Chinese government payloads. So uh, that's pretty cool and also a little bit of a competition for other commercial companies around the world who are trying to launch small satellites. Speaking of commercial competition, the very next launch of the year, or the third launch of 2017, was from the United States and the Falcon 9 rocket launched the first 10 Iridium Next satellites into orbit. Now this was a big deal because this was the return to flight for SpaceX ever since the September 2016 explosion on the pad. So not only was this able to re-qualify the rocket for launch, but they also did a couple of other historic things on this too. Five, four, three, Two, one. Lift off the Falcon 9. Drop AVIRC and GNC. Now, this launch occurred on Saturday, January 14th at 1754 Coordinated Universal Time from Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. And the first stage booster was able to return and land on the drone ship just to read the instructions in the Pacific for the first time. It was the seventh landed booster ever that SpaceX has been able to land and the sixth one that they've landed at sea. But as I said, the first time in the Pacific. The payload on this mission were 10 next-generation voice and data relay spacecraft for Iridium. They were placed into a 625-kilometer or 388-mile polar orbit. <laughs> Now, 
Now, footage of the satellite deployment was not seen because they had a loss of signal. But they did, once they regained contact, found out that they were getting healthy signals from all 10 of the spacecraft, and the mission was entirely success. So, great job for SpaceX of having their return to flight and being able to hopefully start their path of having as many missions as they possibly can this year in 2017. So, congratulations, SpaceX. Now the next launch attempt of the year also happened on Saturday, January 14th at 2333 Coordinated Universal Time from the Uchinura Space Center in Japan. However, it failed to reach orbit. This was an experimental sounding rocket. It was a three-stage solid rocket based on a two-stage sounding rocket called the SS510. And the purpose of this was to deliver a three-unit CubeSat into orbit. However, just 30 seconds after it launched, they were unable to ignite the second stage of this rocket, and it just fell into the ocean. It's unclear right now whether or not JAXA, the Japanese space agency, is going to attempt more experimental rockets like this. But in any case, they did spend not, they didn't spend a whole lot of money on this, even though they didn't disclose fully how much they'd spent on the project because the funds for it had to do with their whole sounding rocket program as well. But they claimed that if this launch had been successful, this would be one of the cheapest orbital launchers for microsatellites and for CubeSats. So I'm really interested to see if they'll continue work like this, but unfortunately this was not a successful orbital launch. Now the next successful launch of the year was actually from the United States again, and this time it was an Atlas V rocket, which launched on January 20th. Let's check it out. Three, two, one, and liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket carrying the third space-based infrared system for the United States Air Force. Now, actually, on January 20th, which was a Friday, this launch happened at 7.42 p.m. Eastern Time. But it was actually 0.42 Coordinated Universal Time on Saturday, January 21st. But in any of the case, it launched from Launch Complex 41 at Cape Canaveral, Florida. Now this rocket was the Atlas 401, which is the 4 meter payload fairing, no solid rocket boosters, and the single engine Centaur upper stage. Now the payload on this mission was the third Space-Based Infrared Systems Geosynchronous Earth Orbit Satellite, or SIBRS Geo Flight 3. Now what the heck does all of that mean? I don't know, and the military hasn't given a whole lot of details about it, but this is what they have told us that the mission is supposed to do. Not only is it supposed to give missile warning, but it's also supposed to give missile defense somehow battle space characterization, whatever that means, and provide enhanced intelligence on uh, missiles that are launched. So, not exactly sure what uh, this uh, does, and that whole battle space characterization and missile defense thing has me uh, slightly concerned. It makes me think of like the Star Wars program to have lasers on satellites to shoot down any, you know, ICBMs that get launched from somewhere, but that's all that we've been told about this, so all we can do is wonder. So, let's move along. Now, the next successful launch of the year was from Japan, and this was a military launch using their H-2A rocket, and we don't know a whole lot about the payload, but let's check out the footage that we were able to find anyway from Japanese television. This launched on Tuesday, January 24th at 7.44 Coordinated Universal Time from the Tanagashima Space Center in southern Japan. And technically it was a commercial launch for a company called DSN Corp, but the payload is an X-band communication satellite which provides service to the Japanese military until 2030. 
Now this next launch is actually the last launch for January, but it was the first launch for Europe. And we'll get to why I'm counting this towards Europe, because this was a Soyuz launch, and the footage was beautiful. This, that's... This launch happened on Saturday, January 27th at 103 Coordinated Universal Time from French Guiana. The rocket is the Soyuz ST-B, which is an upgraded Soyuz 2-1B that's used only in French Guiana. Now the payload for this mission was the Hispasat 36W-1. What it is is a telecommunications satellite for Hispasat, a company that provides Spanish and Portuguese services over Spain, Portugal, the Canary Islands, and South South America in geosynchronous orbit. Now this mission was actually the first ever mission to a geostationary transfer orbit performed by the Soyuz rocket from French Guiana. And I must say the footage was just great. It's just another example of how space launch footage is getting better and better all of the time. So, in summary, for the month of January 2017, we had seven orbital launch attempts, with six of them being successful and one a failure. So, at the end of January, China and the United States were tied with two launches apiece, with Japan and Europe being tied at one launch apiece. And I want to know what your guys' favorite mission was so far for the month of January. I think for me it has to be the SpaceX return to flight, but then again, that Soyuz footage was just, was just beautiful, man. <sighs> Don't forget to do the other YouTube things like liking this video or disliking this video. Don't let me tell you how to express your feelings. You know how you feel. <laughs> also, thank you very, very, very much to those of you who have been supporting me on Patreon, especially those of you who have signed up recently. And I'm going to be updating all the, the slates for that soon so that I can thank you guys properly on screen. So, again, thank you very much. And if you would like to support this show if you aren't already, please visit patreon.com slash epicfuturespace. With that, I think I'm going to end this video. Thank you very much for watching. Again, my name is Michael Clark. Keep moving onwards and upwards, everybody. And don't forget, add Astro to the stars.